Yo, Elliot, an area I feel unmanly is when it comes to firearms. I own several and I'm somewhat comfortable with my own weapons, but I feel like a chump out of water when it's when talking shop with more experienced users. I'm wondering if you have advice on this topic. My growth comes mainly from doing some reading on forums and watching reviews, commentary, and videos online. Uh, this has been helpful to expand my knowledge base so less often than what's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. It, that's what I'm thinking. Something like that. When talking to a more experienced user, I only have a few guns, gun owning friends, and we rarely get range time together. I have not hunted with firearms, but plan to do so this season. I want to be more prepared for collapse and just have more confidence with gun culture. What suggestions do you have for me? My suggestion for you, listen, and the reason why I'm going to give you a suggestion because I was in the same boat as you. Be humble, bro. Be humble when you're around men that know things that you don't know by by being open and asking questions. There was a time about three years ago, I didn't know anything about firearms. Nothing. I knew nothing about firearms. And so what did I do? I hired people that were smarter than me. People that were even like colleagues of mine. I said, no, let me pay you so that you can, so that I can be a dummy. I, there's a lot of value I've learned. I've learned in, through experience because I have a big ego. And like yourself, I don't want to be the underdog. I don't want to be the guy that doesn't know. But I discovered that that's an immature way to live and it doesn't serve me at all. So I actually like being the dummy in the, in, in the realm, whatever it is. I'm a dummy right now that went gator hunting last Friday. The guy that took me gator hunting, he's younger than me. But he's been hunting gators for the past 10 years. So I ask all kinds of questions. What's this for? What's that for? And he starts talking and I'm like, what does that mean? He would say, I forget what he said, but he made some, some he said something. And, the, and my other neighbor was talking to him about it. And I was like, what does that mean? I don't know what it is, maybe just about my older age, you know, being in the wisdom that I've developed, but I want to be a clean slate and I want to be around guys that know more than me so that I can absorb all they have. It may have taken them 10 years to learn what they know, but I can learn it in 10 weeks if I ask good questions and I stay humble. There's a lot to this also. Number one, when you're around men that are that have mastery or proficiency in an area that you don't and you humble yourself and ask questions and be receptive. I don't know about you, but those guys feel better about themselves. And as a result, they'll feel better about you as, as someone who let's flip this, let's flip the script. If somebody comes around and they're ignorant about something to me, something I'm an expert in, right? Let's say lifting. They come in and they come in and they humble themselves and they ask real fundamental basic questions. I don't think of them as stupid. In fact, I think this is great because, wow, he really values what I have to say. And he really doesn't know anything. So I get to really show all I know right down from the moat. Like, what is a barbell? OK, well, I'm happy you asked that. I am literally happy you asked what is a barbell? That's, you know, I'm not going to say, I don't, it's just my attitude. I don't think that person's stupid. I think this is just something they don't know anything about. And so I said, the difference between a barbell, you know, barbell is long and you put plates on it. A dumbbell is or just, you know, the plate is, you just have it by itself, right? Whatever, whatever it is. I'm pleased to answer that person's questions. So I know that when I'm around other men that are, that have value that I don't, they know things I don't, I know they'll be pleased even if I ask stupid questions. Also, it's a matter of developing rapport and relationships with other men. I know that I have an intimidating presence. I, since I was a kid, I've had an intimidating presence. When I was in high school, you know, people were just afraid of Elliot, right? It's because my face, because the way I talk, whatever it is. Knowing that I have an intimidating presence, it, it, it buffers my harshness a little bit when I ask questions, when I remain humble, when I'm receptive to the other guys. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I think you will do better if you stop beating yourself up and saying, oh, I'm a chump out of water when talking shop with more experienced guys. No, you're, you are ignorant, 
but you get the you get the blessing to be in their presence and to learn from men that are experts. This is a part of I think why a part of the reason why men are lost today is because we don't know how to acknowledge authority. We don't know how to acknowledge mastery or to mirror value in other men. We think we always have to be the know-it-all, and that's an immature way to be. When you're around men that know something better than you, know something more than you, it fosters the relationship between you and them by taking the back seat, by stepping down a little bit. Allow there to be hierarchy. That's another thing men, I I think this is a post-enlightenment idea that we we start rejecting authority. I think it's a I think it's an enlightenment idea. I don't think we always acted this way, especially when we were apprentice, like during the apprentice age, right? During the Middle Ages. It was after the Middle Ages that we started to become disdainful towards authority, all authority. And that means even like my neighbor, if he's smarter than me. Ooh, ooh, right? I don't want to subject myself to his authority thinking that, you know, he's going to look down on you. That's all a lie, guys. That's all a lie. When you're in the presence of someone who has authority over you, acknowledge it and pay respect. Pay respect to the guy that's, that even though the gator hunter neighbor of mine was 10 years younger than me, I owe all respect to him. Anything goes down, I, I don't know anything. I'm fucking ignorant. I look to him. Hey, is this all right? What's going on over here, right? If I think I need to do something or say something or take action, I check with him first. I'm like, okay, what do you want me to do? You want me to grab that pole? You want me to hit that thing? You want me to grab that? What do you want me to do, right? I'm not going to do anything until I ask him first. But if he tells me once, you only have to tell me once. That's the other thing. If somebody tells you something once, they should only have to tell you something once. If, he, if, if I ask him what to do and he tells me what to do, and then I forget and I have to ask him again, then just like any other man, he's going to get frustrated. So don't let people have to repeat themselves, but always give them an opportunity to teach you something. Take notes. I have been, I'm a fish out of water right now. And that's why I loved your question so much, because I'm exactly where you are in, 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 in my life right now, because I'm totally ignorant about so many things that I'm needing to do, right? So... I have to get cattle on my land. I'm getting, I have to get cattle. I have to get it by the end of the year for my tax exemption. Fucking government, right? But I was going to do it anyway. It's just kind of forcing my hand. So I, I'm making friends with all my neighbors because they're cattle ranchers. I, on Saturday, it was funny, on, on Friday after I left gator hunting with my younger neighbor, who I don't know shit about gator hunting. It was our first time, my first time, and I'm playing ignorant. I came home. And then I went to my other neighbor's house who was, who was older than me about how to select and care for and train and feed and take care of cattle. So I went from being a student to being a student. And it was so funny. Then that evening, another neighbor came by with his wife and his wife raises award-winning cattle. She, she show cattle. That's what she calls them. Show cattle. And so she came over, and now I have this woman sitting here schooling me and my wife on all things raising and, and uh, animal husbandry. We're taking notes, listening quietly, not trying to be a know-it-all. You don't need to be a know-it-all. I don't think being a know-it-all is impressive to other men either, too. I, in fact, think it's, I'm actually impressed when I'm around a man that I know is a respectable, distinguished man. I know this man is worthy in his own field, right? Say, for example, if like if a, if a uh, an artist or a lawyer or a scientist or you know a, even even a real estate builder or you know somebody who's a genius in their area of work, he comes to me. I'm in awe of this guy. I remember having a client, one of my very first clients, when I was in. Um, when I first moved to Florida, he was the CEO of Raymond James. You ever heard of Raymond James Stadium? That's the, the stadium that the Bucks play for. That's how big of a guy he was. He was a CEO of Raymond James. And although I was a lot younger and a little bit immature, I did recognize this sense in myself when I was around him that, wow, I'm around an important guy. This guy's really important and he's he's really a master and a lot of people look up to him. But he's 
yielding to my authority as a strength coach. He's listening to me about how to work out, what not to do, what to do, what to eat. He completely humbled himself to this 23, 24-year-old kid about exercise. Meanwhile, he's literally three times my age. He must have been like close to 70. And he's the CEO of a, a large finance corporation with probably thousands of employees. In a way that I was, I was in awe of him for that. Like, wow, you're listening to me. He's listening to me, right? And so I think it's the same way. If you go around the guys that are talking shop and you play the dummy, be the dummy, ask them questions, they're not going to look down on you. They may actually even look up to you for your willingness to be humble and ask questions. So anyway, I know that's a long-winded way of saying that, but I think you just need to get over that. I think you need to get over it. It's your own hang-up. It's your own bullshit. Go and actively try to be ignorant in certain circumstances because you're going to be you're going to be enlightened more. You're going to be more receptive, and I think it it fosters better relationships between men. Men operate in hierarchies. That's why we're always trying to outdo each other because we know everything's a pissing contest with men. But there are some times when you got to acknowledge he pisses farther than me, right? <laughs> if using the analogy. And it's good, it's healthy to recognize when a man is ahead of you in a particular area. You got to acknowledge his mastery and you got to humble yourself before him. I think it's good for men to do this, dude. So I hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting, done.